Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the very first in our series of masterclasses for HR on board. Um, we're running these sessions because, as you may know, and especially with some of our customers who've been with us for a long time, HR on board has changed dramatically in the last six to eight months. Um, we've changed very much from you guys give us everything that you want to do in HR on board and we'll do it on your behalf and our amazing support team will do that for you to really starting to expose a lot of these features and functionalities to allow you to do it yourselves. Um, and that also, what comes with that really is um, the training. Um, so we want to be able to train you and um, really give you the very best experience so that when you do want to make a configuration change in HR on board, um, it's quite easy to do and manage. So we will be holding these masterclasses every month. Um, it'd be really great to hear from you as to what topics you would like us to cover. Um, so even in the chat section or the Q&A section um, that you see in, um, in the Zoom webinar today, give us your thoughts um, and your requests and we'll take them all on board. Um, but otherwise, our inaugural masterclass is kicking off with notifications um, as it's something that is heavily used. Um, it's an extremely powerful feature as it does automate um, a whole heap of sort of back office processes. Um, and yeah, we're really excited to bring you um, a, a learning session on notifications today. So um, who is joining us today is of course me. Um, hi everybody, I'm sure. Um, Think looking at the list of spoken with everybody today, um, um, the customer success manager here, Michelle Clancy, and uh, also joining us, who many of you will also know, is Steve Reynolds, um, our guru consultant and resident statistician as well. Um, so thanks, Steve, for doing this. No problem. Um, so with typical webinars, we have the usual webinar rules. Uh, you can hear us but we can't hear you. Um, however, because we want these sessions to be quite interactive, please ask any questions you may have along the way. Um, you'll see a little Q&A section um, at the top of your screen. Um, so if you want to ask any questions, please do so. We'll either answer them there and then, um, or otherwise we'll just get a collection of the questions and we'll, we will have a Q&A <coughs> session um, at the end, which takes us into the agenda. Um, so what we will be covering today. So notifications. What um, Steve will be taking you through is really nailing the basics. Um, so really how to set up and create um, quite a standard notification um, without too much sort of bells and whistles around it um, and it really um, cover those basics. Um, what in, we will importantly also cover is how to troubleshoot any errors um, that you may get if you are creating um, a notification, that's really important to cover. Um, and then go into some really cool advanced stuff. So putting conditions on notifications, um, adding in placeholders and other really cool sort of code stuff, um, which I'm sure many of you um, will be looking forward to, to doing. Um, and then at the end, we'll open it up. Ask us any questions. Um, it's a really good time to sort of start um, you know, anything that you want to clarify um, or, or anything that we've missed, um, please use that as part of the Q&A session at the end. Um, but what I'm going to do now is stop talking and hand you guys over to Steve to, to get into um, notifications. Perfect. All right. Thanks for that, Michelle. Um, give me one second while I exit um, the presentation mode and go into our nice little demo environment. In our demo environment, I'm currently logged in as Rick. He is a standard HR onboard administrator. Um, while it is a discussion today about email notifications, it is important to understand that the administrator role is entitled with permission. And those permissions are what allows you to do absolutely everything in HR onboard. So before we dive into the actual configuring of notifications, it is critical. Um, if you ever can't see the, the right tab in HR onboard, access the role and just make sure that the right permission is assigned um, to your expected user so you can actually access that. Now, let's dive straight into it. Um, in order to configure absolutely anything in HR on board from a workflow perspective, you do have to access the workflow itself. 
Um, so everything from HR on board is understood at a workflow level first, and then what feature are you trying to add to that workflow? In the demo environment I've got here today, it's actually um, nice and easy. I've got two different onboarding workflows. I've got a standard onboarding workflow, and then I've got an Australian onboarding workflow. So in order to configure any notification, you need to access the workflow that you would like to configure. And you can see that right now, I don't actually have um, the notification permission. So let me give me one second. You've done that deliberately, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I've got my Rick, making sure that he's got the right permission there. Administrator, permissions, and saving. Oh, notification, what's going on? Right, I'll click on the right one. Okay, let me just change my view. onboard workflow and notifications. So as we can see, going from left to right, we've got the name of all currently configured notifications in HR onboard. Um, now it's gonna be as a beginner statement, it's very important that you name a notification that is relevant to what it's gonna be. Because this is recorded across the audit trail and any uh, logs where we record any errors that occur. So naming 10 notifications accepted email isn't going to be the most helpful way to actually identify what has been sent and how it has been sent. Two is where we capture the person, the role, or the group that we are sending to for that notification, as a notification can go to multiple people. And then finally, the trigger that it's activated on. So let's jump straight into adding an email notification. And the first thing you'll see is the drop down of different types of notifications that can be sent. Now for your use case, probably the most um, relevant option will be the back office email notification. You wanna notify um, someone in back office about an action that's occurring. And this takes us into a great point for many of you, a really good item to think about when you're looking at configuring new notifications in HR on board is, is there anything you're still doing manually? You've implemented this awesome uh, automated onboarding solution um, but is there a, an email that you're still manually sending to IT or to get a name tag done or uniform done? Is there something that you're doing um, every single time you onboard someone? And this is a great action point to think about how HR Onboard can actually automate that for you. So in this instance, I'm gonna go from a nice standard notification and let's, for instance, say, We want to configure a uniform notification. The most important point we want to identify is when we want this notification to go out. Um, this will be quite big for many of you because many of you want to get started as early as possible, but you don't want to jump the gun. Uh, you don't want to have actions taking place uh, before you have 100% confirmation that your new hire is coming on board, uh, which we completely understand. Uh, so it's important to understand at which point you would like the notification to be sent out. Now, more often than not, it's usually off for acceptance. The second that new hires click the accept button, they've entered their code, um, you want that, this notification to shoot off and let them know that um, it's time for uniform to be provisioned. But alternatively, there are a number of other steps. Every main action in HR Onboard is actually captured um, within the trigger point. So you might want a custom notification to be configured, for instance, if someone's been rejected in review and you want the core HR team to know that someone has um, identified that this offer is no longer acceptable as in there's a mistake. Um, or ultimately, you may realize that most of the time, or even 99% of the time, new hires will always accept their offer. So you might wanna uh, get a head start on that uniform provisioning, especially when you know it may take two weeks to assign a uniform to someone or get it in uh, as required, and you decide that that notification needs to be sent out the second the new hire receives their offer. So today for a nice easy one, we'll stick with offer accepted. And we're gonna skip any all this fancy stuff to begin with. So the send condition, identifying any special circumstances where we want the uniform provisioning email to be sent out. Uh, we want it to go out all the time. The next one is an interesting one, because this is where the customization of notifications gets, can get fairly complex. 
And I'm going to use the help guide a little bit here. Um, absolutely everything we're talking about today, uh, further assistance can be seen within our help guide. Um, and specifically, any administration features is actually quick links at the top of the page. So you can see administration guide, the first instance that we want to see is notifications management. And let's look on notification recipients and let's break down how we can send an email to different individuals. The first option users actually enables us to select a nice drop down of every single user within the HR onboard system. So if you've previously created someone, they'll be available for selection. We can also select people who have a relationship with the offer. So the owner, the person who created the offer, or for instance, the manager, which is anyone bound to the hiring manager information field. You can also free type. So for instance, I could free type my own email address in this instance. and it will allow me to add my own custom email. So in this, this instance, I might make up uniform at hronboard.me and we can hard set this email to always go to the uniform department to let them know that they need to provision a new, um, a new uniform for our new starter. HRonboard is pretty fancy. Um, we can also do things like um, everyone in a role and for you big guys there, we can also do everyone in a role with access. Um, so some of our customers know that you can actually condition um, the permission on what people can see in HR Onboard based on the company and locations configuration. So identifying that you want everyone in a role with access means, for instance, only individuals who are assigned to the HR role, who are assigned to the correct company and location structure, um, will receive that email. In this test environment, for instance, I have two locations. I have a Blackburn location and a Ringwood location, and I have some users only assigned to the Ringwood location. So for instance, if an offer was created for Blackburn, they would not receive that email. In this instance, we'll keep it nice and simple. From name, um, while an email will always send from no reply at hronboard.me, you can identify a name where it just titles that the email is from that individual. Um, you can also set a reply to. Um, so based on what has been completed, uh, if they click on reply to from the email chain, it'll actually directly reach out to that person to make it easy to uh, contact for any questions. So, that, so this instance, it's the candidate which might be helpful for the uniform department just to respond if there's any misconceptions on what size or what uniform requirements they may actually need. Let's back to this help so we have a nice clearer vision. Um, finally, subject line is quite critical. Uh, this is where you can completely customise what the, the subject of the email is and you are capable of using placeholders. Now we're touching on some of the more complex HR onboard stuff here, but placeholders is essentially a, a code that can bring across any information that is bound against that field. By field, we're talking about candidate name, you can see a great example here, or position title, or appointment status, things like that. Um, in this instance, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. And requires provision. We may even want to keep it uh, more specific. Uniform provisioning. And for templates, we can do a few things. We can assign uh, different brand and templates that we've customized, that we've added in, or we can use the default HR onboard template, which I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, mm -hmm. by now. And the best part about the notification is it actually pre-populates um, with some suggested content uh, based on the trigger that you selected. So the content that appears in here will actually change uh, based on the send trigger that you've identified. We're not going to do too much here because this is a, a quite a standard notification. I think high recipient name, this will automatically insert who is receiving the email um, based on the information that HR on board has of that specific user or that specific role. Great news. The candidate has accepted their offer for employment. 
and requires uniform um, oh, by. Steve, your, your spelling is atrocious. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Can't let it go out when it and uniform. I can't let it go out with spelling mistakes. Sorry, guys. I know there's lots in the room who will agree with me and be with me on this one. Why? Now I've actually intentionally left a bit of a gap here, um, and this is because relatively recently it hasn't always been around. We have a very cool button that allows us to in, input this logic that allows us to pull information from HR on board. Wherever your cursor is located in what we call the WYSIWYG editor, if you click on add placeholder, a pop-up automatically appears and you get to search from a range of placeholders available in HR on board, both common placeholders and all placeholders. Now in this instance, we're looking for start date because we wanna make sure that the uniform guys know that they need to have that shirt ready and on the candidate's desk or the new hire's desk for their first day. Simply clicking add, <coughs> insert that placeholder and then we're good to go. We can save and then automatically all that information is customized and it, every single offer will pull through that offer relevant information, the recipient name, the candidate name and the start date of that new hire. Now that we've finished completing the notification, uh, it's important to know we've got a little functionality in here called the preview option. This allows us to envision what it's gonna look like in the end, and I think my screen doesn't let me show that because I'm sharing, but give us oh. one second. Because I think it doesn't allow that, all right. Mm. Uh, but the preview option actually allows you to envision what it's gonna look like based on all the new hire information. Any questions about that? I think I'm going to go into the troubleshooting before I go into the yeah. um, super advanced stuff, yeah. Michelle. So yeah, the only questions we had were the eager beavers who want to know the more advanced right. conditioning and things like that. So sit tight, guys. We're getting there. That's two two topics away, but that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, the first item I'm going to go into is troubleshooting. Now we've actually pre-prepared um, some basic troubleshooting within the help guide for you all. Um, but the reason I wanted wanted to get across any of this is because there's a number of different reasons the notification either has failed or may not be working as expected. Um, the, the first item is that you may um, have configured these fancy notifications to go off to the uniform guys or to go off to the IT guys and you get an email one day where it's just very obscure saying, oh, I'm not getting any notifications for new hires. And that gets really hard for anyone to troubleshoot because that's not much information to go on other than people are not receiving it. So it's important to cancel out exactly what's going on and is HR on board even sending it? So alongside um, with email notifications, we have the functionality of both the failed integration log and the audit trail. Now the audit trail captures absolutely everything within the offer file, every step of the way, and actually captures every notification sent along the way and gives you the ability to resend notifications. So this is a great place to start. If anyone has come to you and said, I haven't got the email, I don't know what's going on. The first thing you need to know is, has HR Ombud sent it? Um, as we kind of touched on earlier, because we can configure things to go to everyone in a role or everyone in a role with access, and maybe the way that HR on board has been configured um, hasn't actually allowed for them to receive that notification for that offer. Or it may be that it fails to send, um, maybe on a typo for an email address or whatever it may be. For an offer that I ran um, slightly prior to this, I actually intentionally mistyped uh, a custom email notification where I mistyped my own name, um, missing an E. And it will actually give me a nice red flag letting me know that this has actually failed Payroll email notification has failed to send and it will let me know the email address it's tried to send to. And it's let me know that it's due to a problem with the email address. This actually allows me to go to the configuration of the payroll email as it was titled and see that I've actually clearly mistyped that email. Steve, Stev Reynolds at hronboard.me. And just like anything, we can amend that. And save it accordingly. 
and then ultimately retry any failed notifications from the end of that, which is great. So if you've, um, if you've made a blunder and the email notification hasn't gone out as expected or you've misassigned it, um, you have the ability to retry any failed notifications on the back of that email. So the first step of checking the audit trial, you got some questions? Got you some questions, yeah, I'll jump in. I think it's a good um, spot to jump in. Um, Boris, hey Boris, he's, um, if you scroll down actually Steve, you'll yep. be able to see it. He's actually asked if we can include multiple attachments in a notification. <laughs> yep, so attachments um, work a little bit complicated. It's not as simple as um, including a single document um, to be attached to an email. Um, we include what we call document groups. Um, so this is a, a screen, essentially a screen in HR Onboard that we can attach to an email, which may actually include multiple documents. Um, I think this might be a great little tangent just to show a quick um, tutorial on that. Um, you can attach a form, and that form may be any document group within HR Onboard. So for instance, you may need to attach the employment contract and send it to an individual Ultimately, we would always recommend logging into something like that. Yeah. Um, but you might have something specific like a facilities document that gets automatically completed that you need to forward to facilities, and that document can be included, attached, and forwarded on. Now, because document groups um, actually allow for um, multiple um, supporting info, internal files, off a pack, um, sorry, forms. Give it one second to load. So the uniform notification we did earlier, if we had a uniform form, form that was that exactly we right. yeah, that we filled out, that'd be a really good one to attach there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think my bandwidth is being chewed up by sharing this because it's quite a bit to load here. Um, but under admin and offer pack and form, any one of you can actually customize any document that is associated to any document group inside HR onboard. Which is an excellent question. Really good. Yeah. Um, and Kristen's actually asked. Um, an interesting question. So in um, that first example you showed, we had the placeholder of the recipient name. Yep. Um, and she wants to know well, what what will actually show in HR in the notification if they're not an existing user. If they're not yep. an existing user, yep. it'll, it'll just say hi. So nothing just actually be close. So just say hi, um, Kristen. <laughs> so um, yeah, which is a great question. So recipient name is a really good one to use um, in the instance that you might be sending, for instance, to the HR team. Yep. Um, because obviously you may have 30 people assigned to the HR role. Um, it allows you to actually personalize every single email sent to all of those individuals. Cool. Any other questions? No, we're good to go. Fantastic. Um, so let's just finish off the troubleshooting. Um, so the first one is just checking that audit trail of the individual offer and seeing that it's sent to them. Um, we do actually receive a number of calls where I've ultimately identified that the email has gone through and it might actually be lost on the other side. So it might be lost in spam or trash, mm -hmm. or maybe um, IT might actually be blocking it and not even allowing it to go through, mm -hmm. which definitely allows for further investigation. But that audit trail is definitely a great point to find out, has it broken on the HR onboard side or is it being lost on the other side? As touched on earlier, because it can get quite complex in the configuration on who receives an email, it might be that um, you're sending an email and it's not being received by every, everyone, or it might be that you've got a notification um, that is being received by unintended individuals. And that's a perfect example of assigned to the HR role and you've got a few extra people assigned to the HR role that you don't intend to receive that email. And then finally, um, we've got the notification is failing, which we touched on earlier. We saw a nice little failed error message there, letting us know that the email configured was actually incorrect allowing us to fix it and resend accordingly. If there's no other questions around troubleshooting, I think I'm going to jump straight into the, the nitty gritty of um, completely custom yep. um, requirements. Go to the advanced stuff. So let's say for instance, um, you've started off by configuring a nice easy notification just so you can save it within the system and see what it looks like. Um, and this is IT provisioning. Now, it's quite common that IT provisioning um, might be conditional altogether, and that's in the sense that um, you might have a specific flag within your workflow that identifies if IT provisioning is required or if any IT access is required. But how do we do this? So 
there's a few things. We might want to add additional content in notifications. We may want to add um, conditional logic in the notification content, or we may want to add um, a send condition. Now, send condition is um, very similar to all of these things. So what I'm going to do, um, conditional content notification. So we can write logic similar to how it's um, provided within the um, help guide just here. Now we have a nice little example here. So let's say for instance, IT provisioning is required, um, but IT need to know um, if someone is a fixed term, how are we gonna insert that? So we've actually provided a nice little example here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it out, and I'm gonna walk through the logic with all of you right now. So we're pretty lucky. Oh, I don't wanna copy all of that. <laughs> let's write it out manually. So the most critical thing is the um, opening hashtag if. This essentially lets HR Onboard know that you want to start performing some form of logic or some form of comparison between a HR Onboard field and a value within that field. So, status. The other critical thing is this closing square bracket. This closing square bracket lets you know that you're finished doing any sort of logic comparison that you want to do. You're, you're, not, you're not adding any more conditions. You're just saying, in the instance that appointment status is equal to fixed term, let's write a custom message. And we might write something like, add placeholder, common. We might want to write candidate first name. We'll be finishing on, and then we might want to add a placeholder. Please ensure access is removed. Now I'm almost done, but right now what we've done is we, we've told HR on board that we want to conditionally put in content but we've not, not actually identified the end of that conditional content. So we will actually receive an error message if I try and exit this, just so we can see the full screen, and I try and save, it actually lets me know that I have um, unexpected end of file reach, you have an unclosed hashtag is, which has essentially let me know, I've tried to put in conditional logic, but I haven't defined when that conditional wording is going to end. So as per the example provided, it's important that we remember that closing hashtag is. And it's nicely saved. Luckily, there's a lot of validation performed in the WYSIWYG, so it is quite hard for anyone to make a mistake. Um, and if I was going to recommend one thing for anyone to do at the end of this masterclass, is learn by doing. Um, the best thing you can do is just jump into HR Onboard, have a go at information that you would like to display, um, and then ultimately just go through trial and error. So just to confirm that then, Steve, so that notification will only show when you're when you guys are creating an offer in HR on board and you select that it's a fixed term contract. So for correction, that's an excellent question. So right now it's still going to go for everyone. Yes. Um, but we're only going to identify that the candidate name will be finishing on the end date and please ensure access is removed. So we're, we're kind of jumping ahead for the IT department, letting them know that access can be removed at their official end date. Mm -hmm. But that's an excellent question. Let's say in the instance that um, IT provisioning is required for all um, permanent fixed term employees, but casuals don't get anything. Yeah. So using our similar knowledge, um, Everyone might have slightly different configurations from what appointment status is. I, I get that is a different organizational requirement across the board. In our example right here, appointment status is used to capture the permanent nature of an employment, the fixed term nature of an employment, or the casual nature of an employment. So that allows us to use the exact same field we used earlier on. All right, so before I lose anything, I've done something a little bit different. 
In the content below, I specifically wanted content to only show for fixed terms. So I used the symbol equals equals. Sorry, I use it. Yeah, I use the symbol equals equals, which allows um, HR, on, HR on board to know in the instance that appointment status has the value of fixed term associated with it. Um, that content will only sh show. But I've used the, the symbol here, exclamation mark equals. So in tech terms, that, that is equivalent of not equals to. And how did I know that? Once again, available in the notes. Um, so when you are going in there to try it yourself, the best thing I can recommend is using that notification administration help guide because we do walk you through the ins and outs of the different um, available operations, which is essentially saying, I want a field to equal a value or I want it to not equal that value. Now off the back of that, how do I know it was appointment status? I mean, um, everyone has different words for those things. And I mean, depending on your environment, there's no way we can provide you um, with insight into exactly what every single value is, but you can certainly find it yourself. So because I've accessed um, the workflows tab, underneath each workflows tab, we've got a nice little placeholders list. That placeholders list will actually identify absolutely every single field in HR Onboard. What you may know it as, so we have the field name from a, a technical perspective, we have the on-screen name, so what you would know it as when you're filling out your um, prepare office screen, and it will also indicate every uh, area of the application in which it's used. So for instance, I might have, um, I can have candidate address city, but I might want, for instance, the candidate first name, I can see is used almost everywhere. <laughs> <coughs> and we can actually see that it's even used in the notification that I've just customized to use that first name of the candidate. Any questions that have come out of that kind of more advanced session, Sean? Um, I think everyone's probably trying to absorb the, that five minute coding class that you've just done, Steve. So um, let's, it's, it's pretty full on. 100%. Yeah. Um, so let's go through it step by step. Um, I'm going to walk through it using the, the help guide. Um, and we do try and provide as many tips. What I would recommend is um, designing your own notification, just going step by step from the help guide, starting simple and going out from there. So let's go back a bit up to the top here. And using everything we've learned, I'm going to use the help guide and what I've uh, gone through today to create a brand new notification that is a little bit more complex. So I'm trying to get a bit creative here. Um, let's think of the, the inverse of what we did and let's um, name, name badge provisioning. We want to go out on offer accepted. It's quite a common one. Mm. And let's say we actually only want this to go out for casuals. Ooh, casuals so, get named that. So let, let's say um, casuals are, might be the instance where they're the ones on the front line, they're the ones in customer service and need name badges, and it's the permanent and um, fixed terms that might be um, working the back office. In this instance, using what we know, we know our field is appointment status. So our field name will be appointment status. When we're looking for the direct comparison of a casual employee, and we need to make sure that we open and close it accordingly. So because it's a send condition, we actually get to um, abbreviate um, the requirement of the hashtag is. If we go back, we do have trigger conditions as well, which is great. So let's keep on going what we were doing. Equals equals. So the inverse of what we were doing last time, we want a direct comparison of casual. So in quote, I'm going to write casual, which means this notification will only go out to casual employees. Underneath users, let's change this a little bit and let's change, decide that we want everyone in a role with access to receive this notification. So we don't want anyone who isn't uh, designed to see this off to, offer to um, process anything. And let's say it's the people leader's responsibility 
um, to assign the name badge provisioning. So a perfect example of this, it might be that you might have 20 people in the people leader, but you only have one people or, or hiring manager per location. So you have one hiring manager that has access to the Blackburn store, which means only that respective person will receive this notification. Keep it at the HRM board. Has accepted your offer of employment. There is no requirement to keep any of this. Great news. Let's get rid of the great news. Please provision. Let's go add a placeholder. Candidate name for a new name badge. Now using what we previously learned about um, the placeholder list, all of you actually capture candidate preferred name. So within the, the within the candidate portal, it's actually a standard HR onboard field that we capture if there's any preferred name that the new hire wants to be known, known by. And in that instance, we can go placeholder list. Now I'm going a bit fast here, which is fair enough. Um, in order to scroll through this list, it's probably a bit unreasonable to try and scroll through your potential 200, 500 odd fields that are available in HR Onboard. The shorthand I'm doing right here, <coughs> excuse me, is the ability to find items within um, any internet browser. So whether it's Internet Explorer, Chrome or Firefox, pressing Control F, F, Control F once again, opens up a find box. And it just, it just looks for a specific text that you're typing in there within that web page. And as we can see, I never knew the field name. I just knew that um, from the candidate portal side, it was known as preferred name. And I want to use candidate underscore preferred underscore name. So please use their preferred name of All placeholders. New hire preferred name, otherwise known as candidate preferred name. Add and save. Beautiful. Now, Chris has asked another great question and we might actually, guys, if you want to ask any more questions, now, now's your chance just for this masterclass. Um, any further questions you have on notifications, please, please, just call us or email us, it's no problem. Um, but Kristen's asked, seeing the same condition which we can actually see on the screen now, yep. why isn't there um, no brackets with the hashtag if statement in the same condition? Great question. Yeah. So um, fr from a, a technical perspective, it uses a slightly different language requirement. Um, so if you, if you think of it from a non-technical perspective, the reason no brackets are required is because HR Onboard knows you have to write a condition in here. Yeah. As opposed to actual text, HR Onboard needs something to tell it that you're not just typing in text to send to it on an email. It needs to know that at some point you're looking to write some form of, form of logic. That syntax or that text so it knows that you're starting to perform some sort of logic evaluation is that open bracket hashtag is. Um, and another great question coming through from Catherine. If, if the candidate doesn't have a preferred name, then, then what's displayed? Does it revert back to their given name or is it blank? So that's an excellent yeah. question. Um, so anytime you put in a placeholder at any point in time and that placeholder is not found or does not have content in it, it will display as blank. Mm. So that's worth knowing, guys. Sorry. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, because preferred name isn't typically a mandatory field in HR on board. So if the new hire doesn't um, fill it out or complete it, or they don't have a preferred name, um, that will be blank. So that's probably a good thing to have in your notification that you can. Exactly right. Or if they have a preferred name, use this on the name badge. Yep. Yeah, really good one. Really good one, Catherine. Fantastic question. Um, and. Carolina's has asked a question which I've, I've heard a number of times. So when we create a notification that's 
um, that's date driven and we want um, we want something to be provisioned, but we, but we want it to be provisioned before their start date. Yep. Can we have it so that the date would display, say for example, in Carolina's um, question, say five days before the start date? Excellent question. So this, um, this, this actually gets quite tricky because this defines what functionality of HR Onboard you're looking to use. Um, so HR Onboard has two very clear functionalities that allow you to provision new hires. The first of which is what we've just run through today, notifications. You can't do any relative dates in notifications, so dates that are relative to their start date or end date or anything like that, unless you've got completely custom configuration. But you could obviously include within that message, please ensure that X task is completed two weeks prior to, and then you could insert their start date. Mm, yeah. But this becomes the great debate in yeah. terms of what you're looking to achieve and how you're looking to track it. Because notifications are, are not mandatory tasks by any extent in HR Onboard, but we certainly have that functionality. So I don't want to go off topic, no. <laughs> um, but I do recommend um, when you're looking to perform uh, tasks on a re relative date basis, look at the tasks tab and certainly consult our need help. Um, as touched on earlier, all of our DIY admin functionality actually has its own page within uh, the help guide. So I would certainly recommend this should be your new best friend right now in using that little orange button on the right hand side to consult with any DIY functionality. But I think Caroline has now picked our next topic for the August <laughs> Masterclass, which will be tasks, um, which does really follow on from notifications, you guys, because you can have notifications set up in your environment and we've got these awesome emails being sent out across the business. However, you guys in HR, you don't have that visual as to whether they've actually completed and actioned that notification. Um, so tasks is a really, really great way to do that and it's all in your audit trail. So thanks for that, Carolina, because that will be our next masterclass topic, um, which will be in the final week of August. We'll get another date, another invite sent out to you guys. Um, welcome any and all of your feedback on this session. It is our first one, so, um, so be kind. But if there's any other format or any other way you think um, we can do it better, um, please let us know. But hopefully you are now all notification ninjas and um, we're really looking forward to seeing some of those notifications 100%. being set up in your environment. Um, it's a really powerful tool. Um, yeah, my, yep. my best tip at the end of this is um, learn by doing. It's gonna be very hard to um, try this again in two weeks time and running off memory based on this experience. So if any of you can uh, assign five minutes and just um, chucking together your own little dummy notification um, and just playing around with it. Um, it's a bit hard to break, there's lots of validation in there, um, and especially in, if your trial environment's open or even if you want to mark, flag it as a test notification, um, there's plenty of functionality to allow you to um, pretty much play around with that feature as much as you want. Yes, absolutely. Good tip, Steve. Sorry we're being into your lunch break, guys, uh, but I, I really think that was worthwhile. Thanks for joining us and uh, enjoy your day. <laughs>